Today I'm gonna to show you how to make these fun mug organizer wraps out of scrap yarn. You can make them using multiple colors of yarn or you can make them using a solid color. This project only takes about 50 yards of yarn, so it's very easy to use with um, leftover yarn. How these work is you just take a coffee mug. It also works on a food can, um, just the standard size food can and like a pre-made uh, frosting can. It works on those as well. So you basically take your coffee mug, you take your wrap and you just place it around wrap it around, pull the loop through the handle, and button. As you can see, it fits all the way around the mug. It covers the mug, most of it from top to bottom. And you have these little loops here. These loops are great to store crochet hooks or pins or pencils in. So you can just slide those through the hooks to store them so that you can easily grab them for your project. But if you don't use the loops, they still just create a nice little texture and so it's not like gaudy or it looks out of place. You can also use it to hook scissors. If you're gonna use scissors, just be careful with that pointy edge. But my scissors fit in there. And then you have the mug that you can easily put in other things that you might want setting next to your crochet stand, maybe like a nail file, a pin for notes, your gauge checker. All of these items can just nicely fit in there, your measuring tape, um, and it will fit a lot more um, as well. And so these, this is what I'm gonna show you how to use or how to crochet today. Like I already mentioned, you can make this using multiple colors. In this sample, I actually changed colors every single row, just using up small amounts of scrap yarn. This one, I just used some scrap yarn. I had about 50 yards of some leftover yarn from a blanket and I used that. You're gonna need 50 yards of scrap yarn in a worsted weight yarn. I do find that a traditional heavier worsted weight works better than the really fine, thin worsted weight yarns. So today I'm actually gonna do it a little bit differently and just use two colors. I have some leftover sage green yarn that I will be using. And then I also have some leftover yellow yarn from a blanket I made as well. You're gonna need a crochet hook eye, which is a 5.5 millimeter, a random button. It doesn't really matter the size of the button. I think uh, probably one inch would be the minimum that you'd wanna use, um, but it, it, can, it can vary. So just go to your scrap box of buttons and just find one that you like that works well with the yarn. And obviously a little darning or crochet needle. Uh, to weave in your ends. So to begin, I'm gonna start with the yellow yarn. Just begin with a slip knot and chain 25. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, Okay, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. So there is your beginning chain of 25. Okay, to work row one, we're going to sing work two single crochets in the second chain from your hook. So skip the first chain, go into just the top bar, whoops, the top bar of the second chain from your hook, and work two single crochets. There's one, two, and now you're gonna single crochet in each chain to the end until one chain remains. One, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna pick back up when I get to the end here. Okay, I have three stitches remaining, so single, continue single crocheting until one stitch remains. Now you're gonna work two single crochets in that last stitch. Okay, so the top of the chain has been worked in. Now we're gonna rotate our work around and continue crocheting in the bottom bar, which is now the top bar of the chain. 
You're gonna repeat that and work two single crochets in that first chain. And as I do this, I like to bury that beginning strand of yarn. So two in the first stitch, which round your corner, and then you're gonna single crochet in each stitch to the end until one stitch remains again. So again, just bury that beginning piece of yarn as you work down the beginning chain. And again, I will pick back up at the very end of the row and show you how to complete that. Okay, so I've worked all the way down. I have one stitch remaining. I'm gonna work two single crochets in that last chain. And then you're going to join in the top of the first single crochet to complete that round. You can continue with the same color, but if you're gonna switch colors for the next row, you're going to want to get your new color of yarn. I like to tie a slip stitch at the beginning. And you're going to join the end of round one with the new color. So you're gonna insert your hook into the top of that first stitch, put the new color of yarn on your hook, and pull through to complete that slip stitch. And then we're just gonna start the next row with the chain one. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that there. So now, as you can see, row one is completed and it's a full uh, round. And so we will be working in the rounds for the rest of the project. Okay, so now we're gonna work round two. So I already did my chain one just to kind of secure that in there. Uh, so you begin round two with that chain one. You're gonna work two half double cro crochets in the first two stitches. So here's your first stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook. Again, I'm gonna bury that beginning color of yarn. It just helps with having to weave it in at the end. So there's one, two half double crochets in that first stitch, two half double crochets in the next stitch, and then we're gonna half double crochet in each stitch across for the next 22 stitches. So there's one, two, three, and I will pick it back up when we hit the hit our number 22. Okay, so here's stitch 21 and 22. Now we're gonna work around this corner here. We're gonna work two half double crochets in each of the next two stitches. So there's one, two, now two in the next one, one, two. And that's the end of our repeat. So then we're gonna be, work two more half double crochets in the next two stitches. So there's one, two, three, Four, and now we're going to work our, begin our repeat of working a half double crochet in the next 22 stitches and then two half double crochets in each of the next two stitches. So we'll begin our 22 half double crochets. There's one, two, three, four, five. This is 21. 22. Now you're going to work two half double crochets in each of the last two stitches. So there's one, two, those are both worked in that same stitch, and then two more in the last stitch. One, two, and this is your slip joining slip stitch, which is still kind of connected to the back, so I'm just going to kind of pull that tighter so you can't see it. And then I'm gonna work the next row in this same green color. So I'm gonna go ahead and join in the top of the stitch with the green. So join in the top of that beginning half double crochet to complete row round two. Okay, so for round two, we're gonna work in the back bar of the entire round of row two. So if you're not familiar with the back bar, I'm gonna begin with my chain one just to kind of, not so I don't lose that stitch. The back bar, if you look at the half double crochets, the top V, this is your front bar, your or your front loop and your back loop. The back bar is if you rotate, you will see this back bar right here. So you're gonna ignore the front and the back loops of your stitch or the top of your stitch. You're gonna rotate back and grab that back bar right here and this is what you're gonna work into, okay? 
So again, begin with your chain one and we're gonna work single crochets for row three. Okay, so the first one's gonna be your hardest one to identify. So you've got your chain one, rotate back, and it's gonna be directly below. So here's your joining chain one. It's gonna be right below. So it's this stitch right here. So just put your hook through that and work your chain or your single crochet. Then you're gonna go into the next stitch. Again, rotate over, find that back bar, and you're gonna work two half double crochets in each of the next two stitches. So there's one in that same spot, two. And then the back bar of the next stitch, one and two. And then you're gonna single crochet in the back bar of the next 24 stitches. So again, just kind of rotate. I just kind of hold my work a little bit angled for this round. So one, two, three, four, five, so 22. Now we're going to stitch 23 and 24. Now we're gonna work two single crochets in the back bar of each of the next two stitches. So there's one, and then your second one in that same stitch, and then one, and then your second one in that same stitch. Now you're gonna single crochet one in each of the next two stitches. So there's one and two, and then you're going to single crochet two, two single crochets in each of the next two stitches. So basically when you're working multiple stitches in one stitch, you're rounding a corner. So we rounded here and then we worked a couple of flat stitches and then we rounded a corner here. Now we're gonna work 24 around, or 24 across, again, working in the back bar only. So there's one, two, three, This is 23 and 24. Now we're gonna work two single crochets in each of the next two stitches. So there's one, and there's the second one in that same spot. Go into the next stitch, one single crochet, two single crochets in that same one, single crochet in the next one. And again, this is your joining stitch from the last row. Now I'm gonna to switch to yellow for the next two rows. So I'm gonna insert my hook. I'm gonna drop this green color. I'm gonna go ahead and just pick up this yellow color on the back and join. So since this is a single-sided project, I'm not gonna worry about being able to see that carry up of the color. Um, if you're working multiple colors, you'll actually wanna cut that off, weave it in, and then begin your new color um, in the next row. But if your project is at like a blanket, you're definitely gonna wanna hide that. But since this definitely has a backside that's not gonna be seen, I'm not gonna worry about that today. Okay, so we've completed row three. And as you can see, there is this nice little ridge that runs around the, um, the, the coffee cup wrap. Um, and that's just kind of for a little bit of detail and texture. So the next row is row four. Again, we're gonna to switch to our yellow color of yarn. And in this row, we're actually gonna make these loops that you are able to um, slide pencils or pins or crochet hooks or anything uh, like that into uh, to keep organized. So this is a very easy and quick row. So you've joined with your slip stitch. You're actually gonna begin with a chain three. One, two, three. Now you're gonna, this is the your beginning stitch right here. You're going to skip the next stitch and slip stitch into the next stitch. So slip stitch, and then you're gonna chain three, one, two, three, skip the next stitch, and slip stitch into the next one. You're gonna repeat this all the way around your entire piece until you join back to the beginning. So one, two, three, skip one, and then slip stitch into the next. One, two, three chains, skip the next stitch, and slip stitch into the next stitch. And I'll come back when we're coming around to the join at the end of the row. Okay, we're coming around the 
to the end. One, two, three chains. Skip one, slip stitch, and one, two, three. And this time we are actually going to go ahead and slip stitch into that same stitch to make that round complete. So it looks a little bit roughly here, but these are actually gonna get pushed forward in the next round to become those loops that you can uh, store and organize items in. So that is the completion of row four, and now we're gonna move on to row five. And again, I'm gonna continue with my yellow yarn for one more row, and then I'll switch back to my green. Okay, so for row five, you're going to work into the skipped stitches from the prior row. So you're gonna ignore row four stitches, these loops that we made. You're just gonna kind of push those to the, for, to the front of your work and work into the skipped stitches from row three down below. So you're gonna basically, let's get our yellow yarn here, start with a chain one, push this loop forward, and you can see that unworked stitch below. You're gonna work two single crochets in that stitch. So one, two, then you're gonna skip the next stitch, which has already been worked into. So the skipped next skip stitch of row three, you're going to work two single crochets in. One, two, and then again, under the next loop, that skipped stitch, two single crochets. One, two. The next loop, pull forward, work two single crochets. One, two. So again, you're just pushing that loop forward, finding that stitch underneath and working two single crochets. You're gonna do this all the way around and then join in your beginning slip stitch at the end of the row. Okay, we're coming around the corner here. So again, pull that loop forward, two single crochets in that skipped stitch. We have one more loop, pull that forward, and two single crochets in the last stitch. And then we're gonna join in the top of the beginning single crochet of that round, but I'm gonna to switch to green in the next row. So I'm gonna insert my hook, drop the yellow yarn, and pull up the green yarn for the next round. So round five has been completed. And as you can see, what used to look like little ruffles around, these have all now been pushed forward. And now there's that clean edge of from row five underneath. So for row six, we've already switched it to our new color of yarn. You're gonna begin with the chain one, which I've already worked. Half double crochet, work one half double crochet in each of the first two stitches. So yarn over, insert hook, pull up a loop, complete your half double crochet, and then half double crochet into the next one. And then you're gonna work two half double crochets in each of the next three stitches. Again, those are gonna kind of help make that rotation around the corner there. So there's one, now you're gonna work another one in that same stitch, two, and now two in the next stitch. So there's the first one, yarn over, work into that same stitch, two half double crochets in that stitch, and then two in the next one. So there's one and then two. Now you're gonna work a half double crochet in the next 24 stitches. There's one, two, three, and four. And then I'm gonna work down the side and then I'll pick up on the other uh, corner and work that with you. So here's 22, 23, and 24. So I've worked down the whole edge. And then we're gonna work this the corners here. So again, two half double crochets in each of the next three stitches. So there's one, two in one stitch, one, two in the next stitch, and then one and two in the next stitch. So we've worked two half double crochets in each of the next three stitches. Now we're gonna half double crochet in the next four stitches. So just one, two, three, and four, and then two half double crochets in each of the next three stitches. So there's one, now work a second one in that stitch, two. One in the next stitch, and then second one in the next stitch. 
and then one in the next stitch, second one in that same stitch. We've worked two half double crochets in those three stitches to round that corner. Now we're gonna work 24 across the long edge again. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and twenty-four. Now two half double crochets in each of the next three stitches. So there's one. Here's your second one in that same stitch. One in the next stitch. Second one in that same stitch. Okay, one more. So one half double crochet and then your second one in that same stitch. Half double crochet in the last two stitches. There's one, two, and again, this right here is your joining slip stitch. So if I take that yellow yarn and pull that tight, it actually closes that gap a little bit. Now we're going to single or join with the slip stitch in the top of that first half double crochet. And row six is done. We only have one more row to complete to have our uh, wrap done. For row seven, we're basically gonna repeat the row here where we worked in the back bar to create this little ridge running across the, your crochet work. So chain one, you're gonna continue working half double crochets. I believe last time we worked single crochets in that. We're gonna do half double crochets this time. So half double crochet in the first four stitches. So again, pull that back and identify where that back bar is right there. So yarn over, the first one's the trickiest Grab that back bar. Okay, there's one. And then you just kind of rotate your work to find the back bar on the rest of the rows. So there's one, or stitches. Two. Three. And then four. Then you're gonna work two half double crochets in each of the next two stitches, again working in that back bar. So there's one two, three, and then there's your second one in that back bar. Now you're gonna work 28 stitches in the back bar along this entire row. So there's one, two, three, and I'll come back when I hit that number 28. All right, so this is number 28. Now we're gonna work two half double crochets in each of the next two stitches. So insert hook, there's one. There's your second one in the same stitch, and then in the next stitch, the same thing. One half double crochet, second half double crochet in that same stitch. Now we're gonna work eight half double crochets in the next eight stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and now we're at another corner. We're gonna work two half double crochets in each of the next two stitches. So there's one. Now work a second stitch in that same stitch, one in the next stitch, and then a second stitch in that same stitch. And then again, we're gonna do 28 half double crochets in the back bar along this edge. And then we'll pick back up at the end. All right, and this is stitch number 28. Now we're gonna work two half double crochets in each of the next two stitches. So there's one, and then our second stitch in that same stitch. And then in the next stitch we're working two, so there's the first one and the second one. And then to finish off the row, you're gonna half double crochet in each of the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. Then you're gonna join in the top of the first half double crochet to complete the main body of your wrap. So you're pretty much done crocheting your wrap, but there's one step that you're gonna do before you fasten off. You're gonna create that button hole, or not the hole, the loop for your button at the end of your project here. So you're basically, you've joined with a slip stitch. In that last stitch, you're going to chain 12. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And then you're going to join with the slip stitch in that same join. And then your button loop has been created. Created. Then you're going to go ahead and cut this yarn. And I'm gonna show you how I fasten off. Basically just pull the yarn all the way through so that you have just one end left. Okay, to fasten off, you're just going to thread that yarn on your yarn needle. Now, if you can look at here, we've joined in this stitch right here, but I don't want to have like a knot there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it's like an invisible join. I'm going to just wrap or put my yarn needle through the top of the next stitch, those two bars. And then I'm going to bring that yarn back to the front and then right back through the center of that join. And pull that back and now if you can look at that it looks like it just continues on with the row there and then in the back of your work then you can tie your knot on one of these stitches back here that will secure it but the knot is now invisible and then I like to weave in my yarn ends on the back side of my work Weave through some of those stitches going one direction, and then weave through going back the next direction. And one more time. And then trim. Okay, so now that buttonhole has been created, or button loop, I guess you'd call it. I still have my yellow yarn here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that off. Cut off any extra pieces you might have. And we're just gonna weave in those ends. Again, the back side of your work is not going to be seen on this project. So you do see my carrying yarn here. I wouldn't worry about that if I was making a blanket or a hat or something where the, I guess even the hat, you wouldn't see the inside of the hat. But if you're making a project where you see the back side, you're not gonna to want to leave that yarn exposed. I would have cut it and then started again fresh at the next row. But with this project, it's gonna be up against your mug or a metal food can or uh, something like that, and it's not gonna be seen. So I think that's perfectly fine to leave that. We're gonna weave in that end. Okay, and then the next step is going to be sewing on the button. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is pick out a button. It honestly can be any button. It can have four holes, two holes, um, however, whatever configuration you might want. This one kind of actually had two slots instead of holes. Um, and any of those buttons are going to work perfectly fine. This one happens to have four. Um, I do recommend at least having your button be one inch at the minimum. Other than that, it can be a little bit bigger. Then the next thing you want to check is make sure that your needle will fit through the holes of the button. Sometimes the uh, the width of the needle is skinnier than the buttonhole or wider and it doesn't fit through. So check and make sure that that fits. And then it doesn't matter which color of yarn you use, whether you want to use your green or your yellow, but just cut a little scrap bit off. I don't know, maybe a couple of feet, which is going to be more than enough, and then thread that needle. Okay, our needle is threaded. We have our button and we have our completed cozy or wrap. So make sure you sew the button. I did make the mistake on one of my samples and sewed the button right up here. It actually needs to be on the opposite side as the button loop. And I like to place it right over the row with the loops in it. So I just kind of place it right. You can, you can see where the center is because there's a loop here and a loop here. So you're gonna sew it basically over this slip stitch right there. And just start in the back of your work, insert your hook or your needle up, and then through one of the button 
holes and pull through and then through the next one and then I go over that slip stitch and I like to go through each hole twice Um, one time is probably sufficient enough, but I always, I don't know, I'd rather have too many than not enough, I guess. So then we're just going to repeat that. Make sure you pull that yarn nice and tight. I'm going to get one more on this side. Sometimes it's easier to just flip your work over and see where you're placing that yarn. And back through. Okay, so once your button is sewn on, I like to just tie a knot here at the back. And then weave in your yarn ends. Go through about three stitches, going one direction. A couple go in the next direction. And then back through. And trim. And then repeat on the opposite side. And this is just the same as sewing any ends in on any project, really. I like to weave them through the same color of yarn. So if I'm weaving in green yarn, I weave it through the green stitches. It just makes sense, because if it happens to show, you can't see it as well. And then trim that off as well. And now your organizing coffee wrap is completed. And to show you how it works, you just take an old coffee mug and you're gonna place the wrap over the mug, wrap it around the mug, and then just take this little, the button loop that you made and pull it through the handle and around the button. And as you can tell, there's a little bit of gip here. So if it's a little bit of a smaller mug, that's fine. And there is your, your mug. And then you can take different items. Let's say you have pencils. Again, you can use this. I showed you with crochet hooks on my last one. Uh, you can do it with pens, pencils, um, paint brushes. If you're a crafter, you can put all your different paint brushes in here to dry so they don't touch. And then you can throw any extra items in here as well. Your glue sticks, your highlighters, markers, scissors, anything you want. And you still have room to click in. Lots of little crins could go around here for like a kid's uh, organizer. Um, and it's just kind of a fun way to uh, display your items that you would like to keep out and in use.